really at the heart of science. You have to have a belief that there's truth, that there's something greater to be discovered. So let me ask that old question. Uh, what, what do you think this thing is all about? It's life on Earth? And as I learned about that, I uh, changed my viewpoint gradually from an atheist to an agnostic to a theist to somebody who actually believed that uh, the historical Jesus and the New Testaments What's written about him is true. Rosalind Picard is an extremely well-educated and accomplished woman. She's a scholar, an inventor, a professor of science at MIT. And in this video, she's going to share her journey to God. And it includes two pieces. The first, I would say, is by way of subtraction. The second is by way of addition. With that being said, let's dive into the first clip here. It's Rosalind Picard with Lex Friedman. You said scientists too often assume that nothing exists beyond what can be uh, currently measured. Uh, so yeah. in some materialism, materialism and right. scientism. Yeah. So in some sense, this assumption enables the near term scientific method, uh, assuming that we can um, uncover the mysteries of this world by the mechanisms of measurement that we currently have. Uh, but we easily forget that we've made this assumption. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you think we miss out on by making that assumption that mm -hmm fine to limit the scientific method to things we can measure and reason about and reproduce. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I think we have to recognize that sometimes we scientists also believe in things that happen historically. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I believe the Holocaust happened. I can't prove events from past history scientifically. You prove them with historical evidence right, with the impact they had on people, with eyewitness testimony and, and things like that. So a, a good thinker recognizes that science is one of many ways to get knowledge. It's not the only way. And there, there's been some really bad philosophy and bad thinking recently, you can call it scientism, where people say science is the only way to get to truth. And it's not, it, it just isn't. There are other ways that work also like knowledge of love with someone. You don't, you don't prove your love through science, right? Uh, so history, philosophy, love, <laughs> a lot of other things in life uh, show us that there's more ways to gain knowledge and truth, if you're willing to believe there is such a thing, and I, I believe there is, uh, than science. I, do, I am a scientist, however, and in my science, I do limit my science to the things that the scientific method can can do. But I recognize that it's myopic to say that that's all there is. Right, there's, just like you listed, there's all the why questions. And really, mm -hmm. we, we know, if we're being honest with ourselves, the percent of what we really know is is uh, basically zero relative to the full <laughs> mystery of the... That's measure theory, a set of measure zero, if I have a finite <laughs> amount of knowledge, which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask that old question. Uh, what What do you think this thing is all about? It's life on Earth, life, the universe, and everything. I, and I everything. can't. What's I the can't meaning? Quote Douglas Adams, yeah. forty two. It's my favorite number. <laughs> By so the way, that's 40... my street address. My husband and I oh, wow. guessed to the exact same number for our house. We 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 got to pick it. Okay, <laughs> and there's a reason we picked forty two. Yeah. So is it just forty two, or is there? Do you have other words that you can put around it? Well, I think there's a grand adventure, and I think this life is a part of it. I think there's a lot more to it than meets the eye and the heart and the mind and the soul here. I think we, we see but through a glass dimly in this life. We see only a part of all there is to know. If, if people haven't read the, the Bible, they should if they consider themselves educated. And you could read Proverbs and find tremendous wisdom in there that cannot be scientifically proven. But when you read it, there's something in you, like, like a musician knows when the instrument's played right and it's beautiful. There's something in you that comes alive and knows that there's a truth there, that it's like your strings are being plucked by the master instead of by me, <laughs> right, playing when I pluck it. But probably when you play, it sounds spectacular, right? And when you when you encounter those truths, there's something in you that sings and knows that there is more than what I can prove mathematically or program a computer to do. 
don't get me wrong, the math is gorgeous. The computer programming can be brilliant. It's inspiring, right? We want to do more. Uh, none of this squashes my desire to do science or to get knowledge through science. I, I'm, not, I'm not dissing the science at all. I grow even more in awe of what the science can do because I'm more in awe of all there is we don't know. And really at the heart of science, you have to have a belief that there's truth, that there's something greater to be discovered. And some scientists may not want to use the faith word, but it's faith that drives us to do science. It's faith that there is truth, that there's something to know that we don't know, that it's worth knowing, that it's worth working hard, and that there is meaning, that there is such a thing as meaning, which, by the way, science can't prove either. Uh, we have to kind of start with some assumptions that there's things like truth and meaning. And these are really questions philosophers uh, own, right? This is their space of philosophers and theologians at some level. So these are things science, uh, you know, if we, if, when people claim that science will tell you all truth, that's, there's a name for that. It's, it's its own kind of faith. It's scientism. And it's very myopic. This first video is really just exposing a hole within scientism. Now, in the second clip that we're about to watch, she's going to begin to explain what that hole was filled with and why and how a lot of her preconceived notions about who God was, what the Bible is about, began to change as she actually went about a good faith pursuit of truth into answering those huge why questions. With that being said, let's dive in. Uh, my views at the time were that uh, Christians and actually all religions I was pretty antagonistic toward uh, were people who really didn't know their science or didn't, uh, or maybe they needed a crutch or something. I really didn't think they were that smart. Then I started to realize that many of such people were super smart uh, and they challenged me to read the best selling book of all time, uh, which is probably still the Bible and the Hebrew and Old Testament and uh, Christian New Testament. And I, uh, as I was reading that to my, uh, against my desires, I started to change my mind about some things. And then I thought, oh gosh, okay, if this book is influencing me to change my mind toward Christianity or toward belief in God, maybe I should study other world religions. So I started to do that. And as I uh, started learning more and more about different world religions, uh, I meeting um, people from those religions and going to temples and mosques and others, uh, I started to realize uh, that not only did I have a lot to learn, but I was on a journey that was starting to make me not only believe in God even more, uh, but as I got dragged off to some Christian churches, which I resisted in the beginning, uh, and found some where I could ask questions, very important. Uh, I started to realize that the religion was not at all what I thought it was, and that there were some really interesting and very attractive elements uh, that were very uh, historically verified also, uh, not at all what I expected. And as I learned about that, I uh, changed my viewpoint gradually from an atheist to an agnostic to a theist to somebody who actually believed that uh, the historical Jesus and the New Testaments, what's written about him was true. Uh, it sounds a little wacky to those who may not come from that background. It was not an easy process. But as I did that, and then I was challenged to not only um, believe this, but to put it to practice, that's where things started to really make a difference in my life. And actually, the real reason I'm here right now, spending time talking about something like this, as opposed to just my research, is because it has made a huge difference in my life. And it, I, um, part of the Christian faith is that there's a gift for everybody in the world, whether you're raised Christian or Hindu or Muslim or Buddhist or atheist or uh, any of a long list of backgrounds, there's a, a gift for everybody there. And um, when I accepted that gift, uh, it made a huge difference in my life uh, for the better, big improvement. So I didn't realize it needed so much improving at the time. Uh, those around me saw the difference. And um, today it is my source of strength, uh, an amazing source of peace and joy and uh, wisdom. Now, you know that I love that she ends this with the word wisdom and this idea that Christ is a gift, this gift that is available 
to all religions, this gift that is available to all nations. She's talking about Jesus himself, the gift that is given by God, from God, for humanity, that is the the ultimate gift. This reminds me very much of the movie The Matrix, where there's the red and the blue pill that are offered. And what's so interesting about that as an analogy or a metaphor is that only after receiving the red pill does the transformation of reality take place and is the person able to actually see what is real. You have to actually take action in order to fully see it. There's something very similar to this when it comes to God as well. In other words, if you choose the blue pill, you won't be able to actually see the code of reality itself. It's not a perfect metaphor, but there's something to what she describes here at the end where it's through living it out. It's through trusting in God. It's through holding God's hand. It's through actually taking the truths of God and working them into your life. Actually, this cause and effect that scripture talks about, if you seek me, then you will find me. If you knock, then the door will be opened. There is this reality where God is asking us to take action on what has been revealed about him. And then through that relationship beginning and us trusting God one step at a time, we experience more and more relationship with him, more and more depth, more and more intimacy, just like with human relationships, just like romantic relationships. The more time that you spend, the more trust that you give, the deeper that the relationship grows and the more certainty that you have in the relationship that you have. Kind of a lot for one video, but with all this being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.